Good afternoon and welcome to this afternoon's webinar on Nibor in Kenya. I'm delighted to be joined by Lisa Sykes, who is one of the co-owners of Nibor Camp. Um, as is always the case with our webinars, they are being recorded, so don't panic if you have to leave halfway through. We will be following up with you all um, with a copy of the recording and other useful information like rates and fact sheets and also a couple of um, films that uh, Lisa is going to show you within the presentation will include in the web in the newsletter follow up as well. Um, so I am going to hand over to Lisa. If you have any questions, do write them in the chat box and Lisa will be able to answer them at the end of the presentation. The presentation itself will last about 20 minutes um, and then yeah, plenty of time for question and answers afterwards. So thanks so much for joining us and Lisa, over to you. Hi everybody. So excited to be in the UK for this um, today. It was very exciting. First week of school dropping the children off. Um, let me give you a little bit of background about my, myself. So my name is Lisa Sykes. Um, we are, my husband and I became um, co-owners in Nibor about three years ago. Um, we previously uh, had lived um, in, in the UK, moved to Kenya 10 years ago. And like I said, we're lucky enough to be able to become partners um, three years ago. And we're very, very excited. We, were, we used to be the, um, the high-end travelers. So it's very, very exciting for us to um, be able to now show off what we know um, in, in our camp. Um, so let's talk about why Nibor. Location. Okay, we are, I, I believe we are the best location. We're in the heart of the Maasai Mara. We are 10 minutes from where all the action happens. Um, our accommodation, we've got styles to suit all different tastes. We've got family suites, we've got our main tents, and we've got an entry-level product called Nibor Wilderness. Our style is um, classic East, uh, East African tented, you know, tented camp. We are not one of those camps that says they're tented, but actually has glass doors and windows. We are proper tented accommodation. I want all of our guests to feel like they are in, you know, the movie Out of Africa, um, and they can just picture themselves, Robert Redford, Mer Meryl Streep, on safari, the way I, I feel it should be, in, especially in East Africa. Um, we're very, very affordable price, which we'll get to later. Um, this is just sort of the, the summary of, of why Nibor. So what really sets us apart is location. We are located in the heart of the Maasai Mara. We are in the reserve. Um, and I know you might be hearing a lot of uh, pushback from the camps in the conservancy saying, don't, bu don't book the Mara. Well, don't, sorry, don't book the reserve. It's like Grand Central Station. There's so many cars there. It's crazy. Book the conservancies. Having said that, since the... Um, the increase in the park fees. I, I was there in the middle of July, just a few weeks ago, and it was, I have never seen so few cars. It was unbelievable. The increase in the park fees is really, really working. It's affecting all the day trippers, which were the ones that caused the most chaos and the sort of camps sort of just outside the reserve. They're no longer coming in. Uh, we had guests at a crossing and they said, oh gosh, you know, Lisa, there were so many cars at the crossing. And I said, really, how many cars? And they said, 10 cars. And I said, Oh my gosh, you have no idea. There's last year there was a hundred. So it's really, really, we're really noticing the difference that it makes um, in having the increase in price fees in, in the reserve. You know, and also mo you know, to get to the crossings, which no one books the Mara um, in July and August without wanting to see a crossing. So if you are in any of the conservancies, you're gonna have a two hour drive to get there and then a two hour drive to get back. And that is without stopping to see anything. Well, we are 10 minutes from where any of the wildebeest crossings are. We can be there and by the time the, the guests that are staying in the con, uh, conservancies get to the crossing site, we're already waving and saying bye and going to have breakfast because we've been there, you know, and our guides are, know the area at the back of their hands and they need, they know where to go, where the crossings are quieter and where there's uh, not as many cars that the sort of the guys from the conservancies won't know about. So just in terms of location, that's why our location is so key. It's just being in the heart of the Mara. And I just want to stop all the stories about the conservancies are better because they're not, especially now with the increase in the park fees. So we are set along the bend in the, in the uh, Talic River. Um, what's a, the highlight of our sort of main mess area is the hippo pool. So all the guests love to sit in our main mess and just stare at the hippos. There's a pot of about 30 hippos that sit there um, and, and play in the water and they fight and they, and they just make lots of loud noises and everyone loves watching them. Um, Nibor is can, uh, made up of main Nibor, which is seven tents, five doubles, two twins. Um, and then we've got our family suites, which are little Nibor. And then we have a wilderness camp, which is our entry level price point, which, which is also where we're going to try and be pushing now towards uh, exclusive use. Although at the moment, it, it, anyone can use it, either exclusive use or just two people booking a tent there. We've just had a, um, a soft refurb of the entire camp. 
um, since I became part of it, um, which was quite interesting. So I tried to keep all the all the fabrics sort of bringing in the natural colors as we have red soil in Kenya and having the rust colors and the reds for the Maasai and keeping everything really natural and the greens and the trees to make it just feel really lovely and comfortable. Um, guests love sitting on these big sofas that we have in a deck that, that surrounds the mess tent um, to watch the hippos with an afternoon drink, um, which, is, which is a lovely, it's just a lovely spot to relax. It's an evening picture of what our mess tent and our sort of dining and relaxation area looks like. Another evening shot. Now the camp is fully solar. Uh, we have such a low footprint. If we were to pick up and go, now we've been there about 18 years. If we were to pick up and go, uh, you would in, in about six months, you'd never even know that we'd ever been there because we have such a low footprint. Um, trying to be as environmentally friendly as possible. So everything is lit by solar. This is our sundowner deck, which is wonderful. Um, it's a new bar we put on there. Um, so in the morning, on maybe a guest last morning, they would do breakfast on the deck, but uh, on the other evenings where we have sundowners for those people that don't always don't want to go out on a game evening game drive. Um, some people stay, we've had guests stay for five or six nights. And maybe one night they just choose to stay in. And it's just wonderful because you get great views of the hippos and also great views of the sunset from our sundowner deck. That's Sebastian there. We have a cocktail of the day. He loves making his cocktail. So every day there's a, a, a cocktail of the day that, that you can enjoy anywhere by, by the fire or, or on the sundowner deck. And we also serve all of our sundowners have bitings. And again, that picture was actually taken on my iPhone during a photo shoot we had in April. Um, and that's a real unedited uh, sunset um, view that you get from, from the um, sundowner deck. So all of our meals, so our meals are, um, lunch is buffet style, dinner is plated three course meal. Um, all of our food, we're not trying to be mission starred, we don't have schmears and foams and things like that, but all of our food is just really, really simple, healthy, tasty food done really, really well. Just food you wanna eat, it's delicious. Um, lunch is always lovely to be accompanied by a bottle of wine, a glass, well, a glass of wine or a bottle of rosé. Um, and lunches are all, like I said, buffet style. Uh, lots of salads. We can cater to any dietary requirement, you know, sort of gluten-free, dairy-free, kosher, anything you can think of, we can cater for. We try and keep a, like all of our salads sort of um, vegetarian, um, but then have meats and, and accompaniments that go with it. Um, so you have a good healthy combination for your meals. Um, every evening after a game drive, everyone comes back to camp and you can choose to go for a shower or you can choose to sit in front of the campfire. What's lovely is Lillian, our masseuse, comes down on your first night and gives you um, a free neck and shoulder massage while you're sitting in front of the fire with a gin and tonic in hand. And that always goes down very, very well with our guests. Okay, accommodations. So as I said before, um, in Maine, Nibor, which is our seven tents, five doubles, two twins, um, this is what the pictures are showing you now is one of our doubles and one of our twins. Um, what's really great about our beds, we say double, but these are actually like, I guess in America, we'd say emperor size uh, beds. They're sort of seven foot wide beds. They're huge. Um, all the furniture was originally designed by a famous artist in Kenya called Anthony Russell. And when I was just recently buying all the new softs, that all you know, new mattresses, bedding, everything is brand new. I found out that you know uh, artists don't actually pay attention to uh, standard bed sizes, so all of our doubles had and, and even had to be custom made uh, because they were just so uh, large. But they're made out of this beautiful fig wood, and they're just really, really um, sturdy and comfortable. Um, when I was redoing everything in the rooms, has is, is brand new, and if you if you go on the website, the pictures are completely different because we haven't updated the website yet. It was just sort of developed organically, so I try and stay in every room in the camp at least once a quarter and everything sort of grew organically. So we used to just have one little tiny um, area to hang your clothes in the, in the bedrooms. And my husband had unpacked one day before me and took up all the space. And I said, this is crazy what, that we need more space. So now we have two wardrobes. And then I came out and I said, well, where do I hang my hat or where do I hang my dressing gown? So every single thing in the room has just developed based on me using the room and what I could imagine an, an ordinary guest would wanna have, um, you know, mirrors on the desk to put on makeup, because uh, some people like to do that or even just, you know, you do your face routine at night. So just all these things have developed organically. Um, the bathrooms have been completely redone as well. So this is our twin room as well. And also I did feel having the double wardrobes in the twin room was really essential because a lot of times you travel, two girlfriends travel together and no one wants to have their underwear with somebody else's underwear. So now there's always a space for each person to have their own clothes if you're not traveling together as a couple. Um, just another shot. All of our tents are on the river. 
Um, and every single tent has sun chairs down by the river and a little fire pit that you can sit at if you don't want to be in the main fire pit or if you'd like to just have a drink by the fire after you come back from dinner. That can all be done because everyone has their own room stored when they stay and the room steward will light your fire for you if you ask. It's not pictured but the, down by the river, but there are um, the sun chairs and the campfire there. So the bathrooms, we have running water in the taps and we have proper flushing loo. So you'd never know that that um, that sort of we don't actually have full run, running, you know, that they're not normal loos. Um, our showers are safari showers. Um, they're 40 liters and they're on demand. Usually we try and ask you if you'd like a shower now or what time you'd like a shower. But all you have to do is pick up your walkie talkie and call your room steward and your hot shower will be there in five minutes time. And as I said, they're 40 liters, so they'll run for 12 minutes without toggling, um, you know, sort of on and off to toggle. But if you do toggle on and off, it can last a lot longer. And they're the biggest in the industry that I've ever seen. And I've been to many safari camps. So that's fantastic. And so it's it's not, you know, the, the safari shower, sometimes people are scared of it before they've ever tried it. But once they've tried it, they're like, oh, this isn't an issue. This is fine. It's like a normal shower. Um, so that is the one one it, where we don't have running water is, is in the shower. But the bathroom has running water in the sinks and proper flushing loose. This is one of the tents at night. So Little Nibor. Little Nibor is our family offering. So Little Nibor um, is comprised of a double room and a twin room with a living room in between. Each of the rooms of the tents has uh, the, its own independent bathroom. So it's perfect for multi-generational families. Um, or it's perfect for two couples even traveling together. There's enough separation. When you book with Little Nibor, you get a dedicated safari vehicle, so you don't have to worry about sharing vehicle with someone else. That's why we try and push the families towards that, the, um, towards um, Little Nibor. Um, now, when you're with Little Nibor, you get a, um, a butler service. Um, and you can have all your meals um, in your room. So a lot of times uh, with, uh, families with young children will put the children, feed the children in the room earlier, put them down um, to bed or put them down to bed. And then we can get our babysitting service to come and sit with the, with the children while the parents go to dinner. And if you have a particularly worried parent who doesn't want to leave the children, um, then what we can do is we can still do the same thing, put them down to bed, but then the parents can dine in the, on the veranda of the little nightboard tent and have their own dinner and still have the same experience um, just away from the main mess. And in front of, again, just like the main tents, in front of every little nightboard tent, there is a little fire pit. So that, again, the parents can still experience a, a, a fire if they when the children are sleeping, um, if they're not in the main area. We have our spa, uh, which Lillian is amazing. Um, I've, everyone loves going to see Lillian. So that's always a treat after a long day on safari sitting in a car. Now, Nibor Wilderness. So Nibor Wilderness was our entry and it still is our entry level offering. So we wanted to have an entry level product for people that could not afford, you know, the, the main camp. And so we had slightly reduced prices for a Nibor Wilderness. But when I came in, it just needed a bit of a refresh. Because um, what happens is a lot of times people book Nibor Wilderness because it's all they can afford. But then we automatically upgrade them to Maine if there's availability at, when they arrive. And so um, it kind of wasn't being utilized enough. So we've done a complete refresh of the Wilderness tent. Now, wilderness, wilderness is made up of three um, double tents. They can also be twins. So you could have six twin, three twin rooms or three double rooms. Um, but this is the mess that you get all to yourself. And, and, and anyone staying at Wilderness can avail themselves of the normal uh, main camp. They can go over to the main camp if they want to um, go to the shop or, or just walk around and see what the other camps are like. They can come. But um, it's completely great. It's great for families for exclusive use as well because you get the full camp to yourself and it feels really private. So this is literally just being unveiled in July, the brand new mess um, for Wilderness. Um, this is an older picture, but I just wanted to include it to show the size of the tents at night. They're really, really big. Um, but this is one of the um, tents that we've sort of just refreshed with a bit of softs. Um, we're looking at um, doing a refresh of the tents uh, for 2026. Just some more photos of Wilderness. And a little video of the new mess tent. Let's play this. It's got a bar, which is fantastic. Um, and you've got your own um, sort of um, host when you're at Wilderness, um, which is great. Um, Daniel, he hosts you and gets you any drinks you want. And it's the same exact service, same exact food as main camp. It's just kind of more lends itself to exclusive use. A lot of private guides like to come in and white label it. So they'll take it over and just say it's their camp, which we're fine with as well. Um, and a lot of family groups like to use it. I was just there with my husband and his sister and family, and we had a fantastic time. It was really, really nice. Okay, and it shows, again, it's on the river. As I said, all of our tents and messes are on the river. So just along the bend. 
Okay, activities. So we've got the usual activities and we love doing sundowners. So either you have a sundowner with you. So when you, know, when you arrive, you're assigned a, a guide who's with you for the entire time and he gets to know you and decides what, what would work best for you. So for, he might just, you know, you might decide that you're just gonna do a sundowner gin and tonics by the, uh, you know, on the bonnet of the car. Or sometimes with the, if we find the groups are really gelling or there's a really big group, we'll do a full camp sundowner, which is always magical when all the cars pull up in, you know, in the middle of the um, Savannah and they see this beautiful setup with lanterns and smiling. Um, host serving drinks in, in, in the middle of the Maasai Mara. I, I love surprising guests with that. So we love doing our game drives. You know, we, have, we, we do follow the standard sort of um, routine of early morning game drive um, and breakfast out, in, uh, breakfast out in the bush and then back for sort of a little afternoon rest, massage, lunchtime, and then a little bit more rest and then tea. And then out for an evening game drive, um, which is great. Um, but, you know, but there's no set like schedule, uh, we we sit down with you in the beginning and when you first arrive and decide what your schedule is based on what you want to do. If you want to do a village visit, which um, we do, or if you want to have a long game drive all day and not have to, it, it all depends on your family dynamics and what you want to do. But again, we, anything is possible and there's no set sh schedule. Just some beautiful shots of we have exceptional game in our area. That, I mean, you can see everything, even rhino. We have rhino in the area where we are in the Masai Mara, so it's fantastic. Um, and all the cats, uh, this is a serval cat taken recently. Um, everything is there and the game viewing is there all the time, year round, it's not just it's specific. Okay, um, bush picnics, we love doing bush picnics. I've just overhauled the incomplete setup that we do. All of our bush picnic bags are all brand new. Our whole layout is brand new. We've got beautiful tablecloths and a beautiful offering out in the bush, um, which we love to do. Fresh, freshly poured coffee and brewed coffee when you're out there. It's pretty amazing what the guys in the kitchen can put together in a picnic bag for your picnic lunches. Sundowners are always amazing. This photo was taken in April, the photo shoot, and it's just the sun, the sunsets have just been particularly amazing recently. Um, and obviously we all love to have our sundowners when we're on the bush. Again, another sundowner. Our guides. Okay. Other activities. So um, bush walks. Uh, we're in the National Reserve, so we cannot do walks in the reserve. We, although we have an agreement um, with a, um, a local conservancy that we can at a slightly, just a small extra fee, um, hire a private um, armed ranger and you can take a bush walk. Having said that, I really don't suggest, if, if you have guests that are really keen on bush walks, I would suggest combining this trip with a stay in, in, in Lake Hippia. It's just so much better up there, such a better, much better scenery and much better for walking safaris. I don't think the Mara is great for walking safaris, but if your clients are really, really interested, we can offer that to them. What we can offer, though, um, in our 40 hectare um, property is nature walks, which are great. The children love it. That's Joel there in that picture. And Joel loves to take all the guests around. Um, and if, if they're interested in birding or, or just wanting to see nature, it's great for cheap children like these two teenage girls here. They can go out and they look at all the footprints and he teaches them about poo droppings and the different footprints and um, looking at the birds and the other smaller animals that you can find in the bush, like little Dick Dick. Um, and also, you know, there's always a toothbrush tree and they love to, you know, brush their teeth with the toothbrush tree. So it's just something that we can do in our own property and it's still a walk. It's just not a proper out in the middle of the Mara. Mara. It's just within our own 48 uh, hectare grounds. There's not much that, that, that are needed to keep children busy. I obviously love watching the hippos, which is what um, they're doing there, or just being silly and climbing trees on a sundowner. Um, the guides are really well-versed in taking photos and they're really good at lining up the shots that the guests want. They know how to do that. And they're great, and really great with children. Maasai on the whole are really, really great with children. Um, village visits are always fun to organize. Um, we love um, other children's activities are, um, which the village visits is, is a whole family activity, but you know, the children love to learn how to make fire with the Maasai and make bows and arrows. And it's always a really, really fun experience. This is Anita and her family when she came to stay with us last, which they had a, a blast. You know, people always ask, what should I bring if I'm coming on safari to give? Um, so balls are always really great, rugby balls, football, anything. It's really, really great to engage with uh, local children. And anytime there's any kind of ball, it's always uh, fun, always happens. Um, it's great to see and experience. Okay, we talked about location already. Let's see. Okay, so one other, some other points I'd like to point out is we have a really, really short high season. It is 15th of July to 15th of September, so two months, and then the sort of three weeks over Christmas. 
15th of December to 3rd of January. So we don't do a shoulder season, mid season, it's high season, low season, that's it. Um, our, you know, we can't control the community, um, the community levy or the, uh, the uh, park fees, but in low season, they go down to hundred dollars per person per night, as opposed to the $200 high season. And we've really tried to make our rates affordable to absorb some of the, the hits of that, of that increase in fees. Um, let's see, so we'll send you this later, but it, just to show you like sort of the per person per night and high season versus low season, um, including all the fees you can see on this, um, this sheet here. And we kind of tried to show like, because we offer, oh, what I didn't say, sorry, um, is we did, we offer a, a year round four for three special. So we tried to show in this slide what a four, so for a, if you took advantage of the four for three special in May Nibor in high season um, for one person for the four nights, it would cost you $4,282 in low season, 2811 and then we've done the other spreadsheets to show you the different prices, what what would what would ever the total price would be. Um, and then with wilderness as well. And then we tried to show the difference in the price for a family of four on the four nights, um, four for three special um, in high season and low season. And that's in the bottom slide there. So it's, it's, a, it's a huge difference, a difference of $5,000 if you just choose to go slightly out of that um, high season um, which is, like I said, is so short. And for the Americans, if any Americans are here, you know, June is ultimate time to come because it's our low season rates, it's low season park fees. And I know the American schools get a lot easier than the European, sorry, a lot earlier than the European and the British school systems get out. So yeah, four for three year round, even in high season is, is one of our specials that we offer. Do we have any questions? Um, okay, someone has just asked, do we need to warn guests um, that they are bucket showers? I don't think so. I think if you ask the question, uh, if they ask the question, tell them about it. But I don't think you need to warn them. I mean, no one has ever said I'm horrified by this. I'm never coming back. And that's my honest opinion. I think if people know about in advance, they're more worried than if they don't know about it. Any other questions? I think it's worth mentioning that we have live availability on the website. Um, which I think is really important for our agents to go and be able to see if there's availability before they, um, you know, request it. Okay, well, I guess there's no more questions. So thank you so much. It's been really um, interesting and I'm so happy I can be here to do this presentation. Um, and listen, I'm always available anytime. If you have any 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 guests, um, it's not a guest, or if you have any uh, colleagues that want to know about Nibor, I'm very, very happy. I can reach about all the time on my email. It's my personal email. You can reach me all the time. That's the one benefit of being one of the last independent camps left in the Mara and not you know, bought out by all the big corporates is that you've got an owner on direct dial um, with me. Um, someone's asking, do guests need to be walked back to the rooms of the guide for the evening? Yes, they do. We are unfenced camp. Um, and um, and it, it, yes, they always must be walked back to the Mascari. So thank you so much. Um, have a good evening.